Hey guys, I just wanted to show you really quick what my workflow in Pro Tools looks like for cleaning and editing simple voiceover files. This is a workflow I recommend particularly for auditions or for clients who need slightly polished audio that because they're not really going to edit it or, and, you know, they're just going to drop it into a product and, you, you know, they're just going to drop it in and they, they won't do anything to it. So first of all, my recording track right now, this is my, my default audition session that I tend to use. So I've got uh, one track that I'm recording to pretty regularly, and I just have these two plugins here. The first is the Waves NS1, which I have just bumped up to about 10 here. It's a one knob plugin. It's really easy to use. And for me, it just knocks out the noise floor really nicely. And Because sometimes when you're chopping up your audio files, the slight rumbling in the background of an air conditioning unit, for example, can cause some weird popping and clicking sounds in the background that can be very distracting. So just having this on there with a very light touch tends to make it very, makes your edits very seamless. The other plugin I have on this channel as well is my DSer. My particular recording mic tends to hit pretty hot in the, the upper end. Oh boy, it looks like this one got thrown on there and didn't get adjusted yet. So I tend to have that one up around 11.2 if you look at the frequency response of my particular mic, there's a slight peak there. And it is it is kind of noticeable. So I tend to just throw pretty much a default DSer on there just to keep whenever my voice resonates at those frequencies, it just keeps it from getting too sharp or too much hissing. Finally, and I have my session set up with a master fader, which is just controlling my final output. You could honestly just put this plugin on your same track you're recording. I just happen to have it on a, um, on a master fader instead. And that is the L1 limiter, which is also from Waves. The DSer I have is built into Pro Tools and comes with it, whereas the NS1 and the L1 you do have to purchase separately. If you catch them on sale, you can get both of them for 20, 30 bucks each, totally worth it. And so this limiter, I tend to adjust this one depending on the audio I'm editing. What I tend to do is I prefer to deliver my audio with a little headroom. So I pull this down to negative three, which gives me about three decibels of space and clearance before my audio would start to peak if for some reason it it's hitting that ceiling. And what a limiter does is whatever your ceiling is, it completely prevents your audio from going past that ceiling. So three, negative three is a really good place to be where it's not right at the very edge. Some people like going even hotter than that. For me, voiceover at negative three is going to be great. And then what you do with the threshold knob here is that as you play back your audio like this. How many emails do you write? How often do you send a message to a coworker? I will move this up and down until I get this level right about where my average volume is and sometimes maybe even a little bit bit below that. And what that does is that helps push my my volume already up into that ceiling a little bit more and uh, just kind of helps normalize things overall. Now, I wouldn't recommend using this one for normalization or the process of bringing your audio up to like a reasonable level in the first place, I would just adjust your gain in general or use a compressor or something else. For the most part, my my input audio is where I like it for something like a commercial or e-learning. So I don't tend to tweak this very much. And then I just put this right about at that average point. To ask them questions about something you're working on. And... Notice as I move this up, my audio does start to get quieter because the more you push into it, the more it pushes it up into that output ceiling. And you can you can tweak this. And I tend to, per job or per audition, I'll move this around a little bit depending on what my average volume is to get a good sound. Again, if you push it down too far, you can get a very artificial sound and it starts to sound a little boxy. So this is definitely a final polish and not a fix something that's wrong with your gain in general. So these are on my tracks and always running at all time. So once I get ready to actually edit, and this is a like an e-learning audition that I just recorded recently, what I will do is I tend to use Audio Suite for the rest of my, my plugins. These ones I find are going to be pretty consistent. 
So I tend to just leave them on and running constantly. I don't adjust them a lot. And the the limiter, it's it's more of a pain to, I don't want to print that onto the track. Whereas a few of the, the decisions I'm going to make that I know I'm going to commit to pretty regularly, I will use the audio suite functionality, which is from this drop down here. And with these sessions, I tend to just have these audio suite plugins open all the time. If you uncheck that little red box, you can have multiple audio suite plugins open. And then I just shove them off to the side here if you're wondering why those are over there. So right now in my recording environment, I'm using a Studio Bricks One sound isolation booth, which works marvelously and cuts most of the noise around me out. But one of the things it can only do so much for, and it does a decent job of, is it cuts out the worst of the air conditioning unit in the building I'm in, but I'm still getting some rumble through here. And you can definitely see that where this, there's not clear silence between these moments where I'm I'm speaking. You can see this little rumbly material here. So what I tend to do is just highlight my entire file before I even start editing. And then I've applied a high pass filter here, which is set to the steepest curve you can get. And then my frequency is typically set to a little over 80, like an 85-ish. You can go up to maybe 100 pretty safely. I think with voice, the limit, you know, they don't recommend you going over like 200. But if you've got low rumbling noises, a high pass filter uh, does exactly what it says it does. It lets high frequency pass the filter. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting off everything below that filter, which is this space over here, and any frequency below 85. Now, the, the curves technically is letting some stuff in even past this 50 point, but it is decreasing it pretty quickly over time. So this is, this is what my particular EQ curve looks like. You may want to adjust this yourself. And now that I have my audio highlighted, I just click Render to get rid of that. And notice that all that low frequency rumbly waveforms, those get cut out pretty quickly. So that's just a good, as soon as you get done recording, you just slap that on there and that, that takes out a lot of that rumble. And that's another way you can smooth some of your edit points as well too. So that way the, the rumbling points aren't getting clipped at all. So next thing I will do is I will go ahead and start to edit. What I tend to look for as an editor is these little things tend to get removed immediately. This looks like where I'm opening my mouth and I have problems with dry mouth and I have TMJ, which makes my jaw click sometimes. So I tend to have a lot of little clicks and mouth movements between edit points and between where my dialogue comes in. So I'll tend to delete that out right away and go ahead and take that out. And, uh, and I can recognize that by sight. I also, the more I've edited, I have a good sense of how much space to leave between different phrases. So I'll go ahead and leave some some brief pauses about this big between the different phrases. And I will edit as I go, as I listen back and then kind of figure out what I need to take out. One thing I know I will also need to take out right away is this is, you learn to read these waveforms the more you edit, but this is clearly a breath. So I just always just blow those out. And this is another one. It's a little, but I'm going to blow that out. And there's a little click right there. So I'm going to blow that out. And you just go through. I use the, the shortcut X for cut just to get rid of those. Technically, I could, you know, paste that somewhere else if I really wanted to. But it's just the easiest button for me to reach where my hand is and where I can manage the space bar to play back. So I'm gonna hit enter here to jump to the beginning and then I'll just listen through. And as I go, you can see me start to edit out the little things that I don't need that I just recognize on site most of the time. How many clients do you speak with each day? How many emails do you write? And ooh, okay, so that was actually supposed to be a separate phrase. So I'll back that out and give myself some space there. Still delete that breath. With each day, how many emails do you write? How often do you send a message to a coworker? Ask them questions worker to ask them questions. Now notice that was a breath between a phrase. A lot of times uh, clients want those taken out, especially e-learning clients. So even though that's in the middle of a sentence, I still got to take that out. So I'll just go ahead and do that as I go. Send a message to a coworker to ask them questions about something you're working on. 
Even if you prefer to interact with others as little as possible, it's difficult to go more than a few hours, let alone more than a day. It's difficult to go more than a few hours. And there it looks like I decided I wanted to go with a different acting choice. So it's difficult to go more. And as I'm doing this, notice I can tell that this waveform looks a lot like this one. I might might say it a little differently, but overall you can see where the pattern of the waveforms, this looks exactly like this. So I know I can just go through and blow that out. Possible. It's difficult to go more than a few hours, let alone more than a day, without communicating at all. Without communicating at all. And there's another pick where I just wanted to do something a little bit differently. And usually I tend to go with the second one because that tends to mean I didn't like something about the first one and why would I re-record it in the first place. Let alone more than a day without communicating at all. Your ability to communicate is important. No. And then it looks like I started reading and when I see big gaps like this, that means I tripped over something and probably needed to re-record a, a significant chunk. So I'll just go right to that by default. Your ability to communicate all right, then I'll just delete that. Your ability to communicate is important, no matter what your position is. That's why having the skills to communicate effectively are essential to your ability to succeed in the workplace, are essential to your ability. And then this one, I remember I tripped over the way I wanted to say this a few times. Again, with the TMJ, sometimes it doesn't always come out the way I intended to. So I picked that one up a couple times and got it right at the end. Lee are essential to your ability to succeed in the workplace. Okay, so that's my initial first pass done. That goes pretty quick. Uh, I have two other plugins now that I'm going to use. These are part of the RX standard package, which is created by Isotope, spelled I-Z-O-T-O-P-E. I really like their, their stuff for editing and mastering, especially. They've got some great plugins. So I tend to use these two in particular. You can get D-Click with their elements package, which sometimes goes on sale for very cheap. But Decrackle is very unique to their standard and above. And I can't live without it, especially again, because I got that crackly TMJ problem. And so all I do is literally just open it up with its default setting, quality low, strength defaults to five here, don't touch anything else. And I just hit render. And what that does is that goes through and a lot of those light little clicks uh, that can sometimes really get really annoying, it'll just clean those right out. And it'll be like those were never in there. There's sometimes if it's a really loud one, you do have to go through and manually edit that out as well. And that's where your declick really comes in well. So now that I did a decrackle pass, I'm going to go through and do a proof listen to see what it didn't clear out. How many clients do you speak with each day? How many emails do you write? How often do you send a message to a coworker? Send a message. Now I'm hearing send a message. Just send a, a message. A slight click there. Send a message. So what I'll do is I'll go through and you have different types. You've got click, thump, and discontinuity. I almost never use discontinuity, but I use click and thump a lot. So what I'm going to do is I tend to start between somewhere between five and seven or eight on D-Click because this one can sometimes warp your audio if you use it too strongly. And I'll go ahead and click render. You send a message to and notice that now some it does take you a while to kind of figure out exactly where these are. Notice I played that back a few times, but notice that click's gone now. You send a message to a coworker to ask them questions. There's a little to ask. And there's a little bit of some clicky material at the end of that one. It's coworker to ask them. And you can you can be as detailed as you want. I'm hearing a lot of stuff additionally, especially now that I'm using my studio headphones that I might not always pick up with speakers. And honestly, with auditions, I don't tend to be nearly as precise as I will be for a final deliverable. Again, with an audition, you're trying to give them a sample, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't lose sleep over editing this sort of a thing out of an audition at all. To ask them questions, to ask them questions, to ask them. And I'm hearing a little bit of, to a, ask them of a thumpity noise right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and blow that out too, right there, that little lead in. To ask them questions about something you're working on. Even if you prefer to interact with others as little as possible, it's difficult to go more than a few hours, let alone more than a day, without communicating at all. Your ability to communicate is important. Okay, and I'm hearing 
a little bit of a plosive on that P. It's not bad, but I want to get rid of that. So I'll switch over to the thump. And this one can also, if you use it too strongly, you can lose the quality of the P that you actually want to keep. So you do want to be a little careful with the sensitivity on this. And sometimes you have to render it out and hear it and then go, no, and then go back and fix it a few times. So I'll try that. Is important. No. That's still a little hot. So I'm going to go ahead and move that up. Is important. No. There we go. Notice that 8.0 it cleared out. And you could still hear it a little bit. It depends on your speakers. You might not hear this at all. And you'll be like, Natalie, what are you talking about? But when I'm listening back, I can hear just a little bit of plosive until I added it at that specific strength. It's important, no matter what your position is. That's why having the skills to communicate effectively. Ooh, okay. And there's another thump there. Effectively, 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 effective. And notice I'll kind of play it back and I'll, I'll back it slowly forward to see when it cuts off. Effectively, effectively. And not, so I was able to tell that it's at the end of this. So I'm only going to highlight the end of it. Dethump and declick, you can't really globally apply those because it will it will sound like garbage. So I usually try to highlight as little as possible to get that that edit in there. Effectively. And notice that thump's gone. Effectively awesome. are essential to your ability to your. Oh, and right there, I must have made like a little no nose congestion sound. So I'm just going to go ahead and take that out. Dull to your... Uh, all the way over there. Dull to your... But that moved it forward just a little bit too much. So I'm going to copy a little space. And then I'm going to add that over here just to give that a more natural pause that would have been there if it wasn't for that, that weird nasal sound. Are essential to your ability to succeed in the workplace. Okay, and that's not perfect, but overall that gets that that gets you um, pretty much there. And I'm, I might polish that a little bit more if that was a final deliverable. But for an audition, I'd be very happy with that. So I go ahead and I highlight everything and then use Option Command G to make that a group just so everything's all in one file. All right. And from there, I'm ready to export out this file as an MP3 or as a WAV file or whatever your client asked for. And I'm ready to send that off. And that's pretty much what that looks like. This can be applied again to auditions, to your final deliverables, all the way up to audiobooks. This is how I've edited audiobooks in the past. I always tend to update my process a little bit, like the L1 in particular is a, a newer addition to my workflow. I've used a compressor in the past, but I was having some problems with it not being a hard enough limiter. And so occasionally some little peaks would go through that weren't always registering precisely on my system. So for me, I, I like having a limiter to just make sure I have that hard ceiling. But anyway, so this, this is a process that kind of evolves. You will always find new plugins and introduce new things that you like. But overall, this is, this is what I would recommend as a starting place. If you're curious what I do, that might work out for you as well. Thanks so much. And I'll be back with more tutorials soon.